Hey you guys, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mariah. And I'm Jasmine. And this is... To Be an MD. <laughs> Today we are going to start um, a series called Applying to Med School, um, where basically we're going to go through the whole thing, you know, before you apply, mm -hmm. as you apply, after you apply, mm -hmm. just all of it, you know, all everything you need to do. Um, so let's just jump right in. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So today's video is going to be about um, this interesting concept that Mariah talks about called the tripod of the tripod. your your application so i want you explain it okay <laughs> yeah so when you're applying to med school you have the tripod and the tripod has three legs like so and those three legs each encompass a different aspect of your application one of those is your gpa the other one is your extracurriculars and the other one is your mcat yeah. those are like the core new vd center of your application and you need those before you even decide to hey and you go start filling everything out those are things before like as you get into grad school i mean undergrad you start school those are things you're working on before you even get it. the rest of the things we're going to talk about so yeah. those are the primary things that you need yeah so as far as gpa goes um what you need to know about your gpa is first of all you're going to have multiple gpas so you have your overall gpa which is all of your uh science all your classes all the classes yeah. you've taken mm -hmm. and then you have your science gpa mm -hmm. which is you know all of your science courses or uh all your prereq courses mm -hmm. minus the non-science prereqs right. um and then you will have your uh your graduate gpa if you're a non-traditional grad like we were you do grad school mm -hmm. and then you'll have your uh, post back okay. gpa if you do a post grad program or take undergrad classes after you've graduated also uh, also us yeah. so that's like you have four different gpas that go into this and they all kind of have to be well they all not have to but they all it looks good if they're all around like a 3.0 3.5 really mm -hmm. 3.5 and higher yeah i say you're good anything yeah. below 3.5 to 3 you're probably still okay but that's when you're going to want to start focusing on the other two legs yeah. of your tripod. you got to depend on those. Yeah. The kind of you got to rock back and forth Exactly. With these yeah. You know. So, and then if you're below a three, all hope is not lost. There are plenty of people who get into med school with, um, you know, GPAs below three, with one of their GPAs below three, or yeah. all of them even. I've seen stories. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of like... Fine. Yeah, it's just a part of the tripod. Mm -hmm. Just don't don't lose hope. There are things to help you. Like we said, post back programs, master's degrees. If that undergrad is low, um, it's okay. As long as you're showing improvement yeah. in any program that you're in, you know, if you were low here, two seven, then you get a three five, and then a three seven. Mm -hmm. As long as you're showing improvement and they see that you're working hard, they see that you retook those classes and you might have got a C, but then you got an A. It's still good. They like that you stuck with it and that you're determined yeah. to learn that material. Yeah. So. I think you really said it. Like, uh, improvement is key. Yep. You know, they don't ever want to see you, like, take a class or, you know, you do bad in undergrad and then you go to grad school and you do worse. Mm. Or you do bad in grad school and then you take some post back classes and you do worse. Like, you know, it's just keep climbing. Yeah. Um, the other thing we wanted to talk about with GPA is the prereqs. Yes. So, what are the med school prereqs? Ah. They they vary per school, but yeah. there are some core ones that are going to be the same. Standard. Like, yeah, like physics. Yeah. Oh, wait, physics one and two. Is physics standard? Yeah. For everybody? Yeah. Okay, so physics one and two. With lab. With lab. Okay. Ochem one and two. Ochem one and two, yeah. With lab. Bio one and two. With lab. Um, Gen Chem one and two. Yeah, Gen Chem. With lab. Um, you have English, English, English Lit. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like the composition one and two, like the little basic ones. Yeah. And then they're going to ask for... Oh, math. Oh, math. Yeah. yeah. You can do stats or calc. Yeah. Um, I've seen some places like calc, or some algebra. places like stats. 
some places college algebra. Oh yeah, some places will take college algebra, but they want to see um at least three credits. At yeah, least. I thought I felt four. Of what? Maybe four or six. I don't know, but yeah. it, like you need at least like two math classes. I think like at least one, maybe Depends two. On the school. Yeah, and then you want to look at the specific school to see which one they prefer over the others. Other yeah, and then humanities courses like yeah. psych, social, yeah, psychology, sociology. Maybe a Spanish ethics, ethics, yeah, stuff yeah. like that, yeah. and then and just upper, upper level, level bios, bio yeah. So those are your genetics, your cell molecular biochem. biochem. Sometimes they'll count biochem as an upper level bio. Sometimes they'll count bio as it's a chem. Class. So you also have to look into that. Yeah. Um, what else? That was good. Um, that's pretty good. Your GPA. Yeah, that's it. I think so. I think that's all the prereqs. I feel like I'm missing something important, but I it's think okay. that's it. You got leeches really oh, have to look at the school. The recommended courses. <laughs> you can ask the genetics. And no, 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 no. Recommended like anatomy and physiology and okay. immunology. So oh, those. So those. So I'm talking about this because it came to bite me in the booty. And I. Oh. So. <laughs> Um, anatomy. It me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anatomy and physiology is a recommended course for a lot of these schools, but recommended really means just take it, like just do it up front. Because now I'm having to go back and retake, um, yeah, especially. And then I'm noticing that some schools they say they only require like bio, but one of those bios they want it to be some type of physiology credit, hmm. which is anatomy and physiology. So. Hmm. Mm. Might as well just go ahead and take it. I see. Yeah, um, it's only then, for your good because you have to take that yeah. your first block or first year of med school. Yeah, so you need to see that material. Yeah, <laughs> you don't I get mean, slapped in the face when you get in there. Yeah, so. it'll help to see it before. I've heard that. I've also heard opposite with some people saying that um, a lot of med schools like to teach it to you. They don't want you to come in with any preconceived notions. But I still say just take the class because at the end of the day. Hopefully you don't just apply to one school. You apply to you know at least five if you can mm. to give yourself some options. So just take anatomy and physiology. Same with immunology. So I saw that as recommended for mm. some uh, schools too. Nobody has required that. It has just been recommended. Yeah. So, but it's a good, it's a good one to take as well. Indeed. So yeah. So with all of those, all your prereqs, you know, you just want to, um, like we said. Do your best to get, you know, above a 3.5 on all your GPAs. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. It's not. But, you know, it'll make your life a lot easier if you can. Just do the work up front. I promise. Because yeah. we, we're doing a lot of backtracking. And yeah. Once your GPA goes down. you get, Getting it back up is the worst. Yeah. I yeah. promise you. Literally. Man. Literally. Okay. So that's all for GPA. Yeah. So the next part of the tripod is um, MCAT. Mm. So the MCAT, this is another part of your tripod. Okay. We already talked about your GPA. So depending on your GPA, if it's strong, you can probably get away with a lower MCAT score. When I say lower, like maybe even 498 to 505, saying you have like a 36, 37, yeah. like above that 35 she was talking about. Yeah. But if you have a lower GPA, like 27, flat yeah. 3, 3, 2, you may want to approve yourself yeah. with that MCAT. They by getting say, a I talked grade. to some people and they said like 510 or above if your mm. GPA is lower. Yeah. Lower is really like a 3. Mm. So if you're, if you're at like a 3.0 or below, then your MCAT score should probably be 510 and higher. But that also depends on if you did those post fact programs in those graduate schools and what, you yeah. know, your other part of the tripod is. If you're showing that improvement, then, I mean, then you're going to stand out as well. Yeah. But they want to see that you have competence in those core science. Yeah. Because um, that's what's going to get you through medical school. So it's not just about getting in. They're looking at, you know. Further down the road. Exactly. Will you make it through? Will you pass this board? So, um, and you may be the best applicant, but there's no way for them to really tell what type of student you are, yeah, without anything else because everything else is just you as a person, which is your extracurriculars, which mm -hmm. you get into. But as far as you being smart and everything, they're looking at these numbers, and yeah. it's sad to say, but this is the number part, and yeah, it's, it's it all sucks, looking at. but it is, yeah. But yeah, like she said, like a, if you have a 3.5 and up and you get a 500 on the MCAT. 
you might be fine. You'll probably be fine. I'm. I mean, I'm not gonna say you will be because I'm not okay. in admissions. But this is true. You know, but I mean, there's a good chance you'll be fine. But if you have like a 3.0, I say 510 and up, and anything below 3.0. Just shoot as high as you can, because <laughs> the higher that score, the better your chances get. I promise. Um, yeah, I just I wouldn't do anything below a five ten. But like I said, that also depends on like the other parts of your tripod and like yeah. you know your extracurriculars are outstanding. You've done some research. Yeah. You've shadowed. You published. And like, you have a master's degree, and you have a four point zero in POTUS facts, and then you go and you get like a low five hundred you know, in your MCAT score, and you have that, you know, two point whatever for undergrad, I mean, there's a good chance you'll be okay. But if you, you know, if you don't have all of that, and you're just saying, here's my 2.0, here's my 500, Take pity let on me, me in. I don't, I don't know, friend. <laughs> I don't know, friend. I mean, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I can't say anything to Sips that. Sips to you. <laughs> but, um, yes. Yeah. The only other thing we were going to talk about is when to take the MCAT. Yeah. Just briefly in this video. Mm -hmm. Which is basically before you apply. Before you, yeah. All of Please. this is, all of, everything we're for talking yourself. about in this video is before you apply. Mm -hmm. So before you even think about submitting that application, mm -hmm. uh, plan when to take that MCAT and take it early enough early. to where you can at least do one retake. Yeah. Because most people, nine times out of ten, need at least one. Especially after the first time. So it just, it's, it's a true. part of it. Just yeah. let it be it. Um, but that's all we're going to say because we're going to have a whole MCAT video and we're going to rant and it's going to be long and it's probably going to be two parts. So I'm just, we're going to leave MCAT at that. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, okay, so the last part of your tripod is the extracurriculars, <laughs> which is my favorite part yeah. because I feel like I did a lot of extracurriculars did. and I had a lot of fun doing them. She I was... Did. I was the whole president. Yeah, I was in organizations. Yeah. I was the president of an organization on my campus. I, you know, did a sporty. I did shadowing. I had internships. I did research. It was fun. I had fun with my extracurriculars, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead. I, went out there. I was I was out there. She was. But um so Make yeah. Moves. So <laughs> I stayed in. I stayed in the lab. Um, I got out towards the end. But, but she had a lot more research experience than I did. Like, she did it basically all of undergrad. Yeah. And that's going to look really good. So, yeah, good. one thing they like with extracurriculars is Maybe. consistency. Yep. So, whatever you do, you do you. Be passionate about it and stick to yeah. it. Yeah. So, do as much as you can consistently. That's the big thing. Also, important, unique experiences. So, you know, everybody's going to have some shadowing. Everybody's going to be in pre-med orgs. Everybody's going to be some science organization or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. But they want to see who you are outside of med school, yeah. outside of pre-med. Yeah. So. You got to be a person. Yeah. Besides being a doctor and being smart, you know, you're, are you human? Yeah. Do you like other things besides exactly. reading, reading Do a you book? have interests? Like, yeah. what do you do? But, so I know a lot of people have trouble getting research or don't know how to approach it. Um, my biggest advice is be bold about it um, and start early. Yeah. So Professors appreciate you starting early. I yeah. didn't know this. But when I got into it, he was like, yeah, we love to see you guys as freshmen and sophomores, not just juniors, getting ready to graduate. Yeah. Like, it's no point at that point. And I felt like, oh, I can't do it until, like, my junior, senior year. And so I ended up doing it, like, my senior year. Mm -hmm. Loved research, loved my PI, fell in love with the lab. But like she said, then I had to go. And yeah. it was kind of like, you don't, you don't get everything yeah, you know. I didn't have time to do as much as I wanted to do. Um, and he was great. He turned into a, he gave me a job over the summer, like, mm -hmm. work study. I did, like, a field work with him. What else? Um, I went back and, like, I didn't teach a class, but I spoke at one of his classes he did. Mm -hmm. He wrote me a letter for school, for med school, mm -hmm. for grad school. All around, he's great, okay? And your research PI is a great person. They yeah. want you to succeed. So it's a great relationship yeah. to have. It's a great relationship to have. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I talk to my research PI to this day. Mm -hmm. I update him on everything that's going on, and he's great. So, you know, build those connections. The way you reach out... 
um, is honestly just send an email. Like a lot of the a lot of people will have their research posted, so you can go to your school's like department direct directory, and if you just have time, just read through. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to go through all that, maybe ask one of the professors you're in class with, like, hey, do you do research, or do you know of any professors who are doing research and Mm -hmm. any help? Because even if that professor isn't doing research, they can plug you into somebody else, and that will that'll put you on. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Connections. So, and then you meet other grad students. Like I didn't even know I wanted to go to grad school until I worked in a research lab, and I was like, "Oh, grad uh, graduate work is pretty cool. I mean, I'm gonna need to do this. I may want to do this." Yeah. So that's what happened, and it can put you around your community, like a a higher level of thinking, like critical thinking skills, mm-hmm. and then you with PhD students. So you just learn, and you learn how to do bio in and outside of class. So yeah, that's research. Oh, and then shadowing also falls under extracurriculars. Need that. Um, shadowing experiences, I know that's also hard to do, and it's the same advice for me for the research, just reach out. Honestly, like if you reach, reach out to your pediatrician or your you know family doctor or whatever, yeah. or you know ask them, hey, can I shadow you? I'm trying to you know get into a career, just be real. And it's like, I know it sounds scary, but don't be scared. Like, they'll love it. They, they'll, most of the time, they want to reach back and teach and mm-hmm. just have the opportunity yeah. to give that. So yeah, that's and that's the thing. Like, they want to, and then I think some places even require them to give back yeah. and volunteer and stuff. So They have programs. Exactly. <laughs> like, if you go on their website, like, the volunteer and stuff like that, they have, like, physician shadowing programs. Mm-hmm. And you can go click and figure out which physician you want to shadow, email their office, set it up. It works. Yeah. Just look it up. So, look, they'll help you and you help them, and everybody gets helped, and now we're all happy. So. Just scratch it. What? We're supposed to scratch the we're scratching each other. Oh, we're scratching back. Yes. Oh. <laughs> anyway. No, I'm just goofy. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Scratch each other's backs. Help yeah. each other. Um, another thing, like I said, I had some shadowing internships. So I found those through, I don't know, one I found because a family friend told me about it. Um, and you can pull back on these experiences when you get your interview. Or yeah. When secondaries mm-hmm. come up which we'll talk about in another video yeah but all these experiences with really right to write everything are. down oh that's yeah. what i didn't do log my it. memory is well but it's not that well so log it and know, get their info can get their info like yeah email address yes name. yes those are connections just you know yeah. it's all this world is all about connections and you will learn that later or you might have already learned it but it's all about connections yes. um so, oh yeah, and then the other intern, the other shadowing internship I did, I found on the, my school's website. So yeah, so that's okay. a, that internships are another route to shadowing, but you just have to know where to look and you have to look for them. Yeah. If you don't want to just email and talk to somebody. She'd be the one to ask. I, <laughs> I just looked up on my shadowing experience. I really did. My roommate, not roommate, my neighbor, mm-hmm. And he was a nursing major, but his mom was a physician. And he was helping me in staff, and I was helping him in some other class. And he knew I wanted to go to med school. We both were trying to go to med school. Why do you want to be a nurse? No. But he was like, you're from Houston. I'm from Houston. Mo City. What's Can up? I help you? Oh, yeah. And he was like, I got you. I've been taking my mom for you. And literally, I was in Houston one summer shadowing a doctor at Methodist, a cardiologist. So, yeah. I mean, stuff like that. You just have to. You have to be bold about it. Yeah. You can't be scary. You just gotta go out there. You gotta ask. Like, don't be scared. If this is what you want, you gotta go for it. Like, period, point blank, and that's it. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's extracurriculars. Was that the whole tripod? That's about it. All of that. Yeah. Oh. I remember what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. So all of these extracurriculars, everything you do, that's how you get your letters of recommendation. Oh, yeah. That is the key. Mm -hmm. So, like, my, like, my research PI, he wrote me a letter. Um, I had, you know, somebody that I shadowed under, a mentor, an auntie. (laughs) She wrote me a letter, of course. Um, I had, who else did I have write me a letter? I don't know, a few people. Volunteer lady. Yeah, the volunteer oh, lady. Oh, we both have professors from grad school. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, our grad, grad school advisors. professors write them. But you see, like, all of these extra things that we did, like, we networked, we got to know those Form people, relationships. formed relationships, and then they reciprocated. Like, mm-hmm. I had, 
I have more people willing to write letters than I really needed to write letters, and I think that's a blessing. But that's just yes. because of the relationships that you know I built, and so that's that consistency that, coming back. Exactly. When they see you really working exactly. and it's like coming back, and they're like, "Oh, exactly. she cares." Let me know. Consistency and diligence is key. It, it is the whole process. It just is. So yeah, so I think those are all the components that you need before you even think about applying. Like, think about that. Go ahead, think about that MCAT. Think about those prereqs and think about those extracurriculars. Um, oh, majors. Majors, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we forgot to mention this earlier, but basically the prereqs we mentioned before, the 11 or 12, mm -hmm. when we started, we were told, you know, basically go with the major that covers those prereqs and it was bio yeah, for me. We were told that by our our advisors for pre health mm -hmm. and That's I weird. regret it. <laughs> like, you know, do what you're passionate about and, and you can take yeah, those prereqs yeah. separately or maybe minor in bio, minor in chem, mm -hmm. or just do a post back after But you school. don't have to be a bio major or a chem major to don't. go to med school. There are history majors that get into med school, dance majors, okay. Spanish majors. Yeah. Like, you know, you can be whatever major. Nutrition. Major what you, you know, what you're passionate in. And yeah. I am passionate about microbiology, and but it would have been much great. easier for me, I think, to do something different that wasn't as science heavy because now I have all these super hard science classes weighing down on my undergrad GPA that I didn't do so well in. Yeah. That's my fault. Agree. But you know, I loved it, but you know, if I'm if I was thinking strategically, I definitely would have picked a different major. Yeah. And just did my prereqs on the side. And I know so many people who did that who are already in med school because they did it that way. Yeah. So yeah, don't feel forced. It's okay. Don't let nobody tell you that. Mm -hmm. Don't let them lie to you like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chair. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, just you know, email us or DM us yeah. on one of our social medias. You know, like, subscribe, follow, all yes, that good stuff. All that. We want to see you back. Keep watching. Yeah, we'll have a lot of goodies for you. We'll have like, you know, we're gonna do a budget video on budgeting for meds. For yes. The application, not for med school. Budgeting for the application, because that's the whole thing itself. Yes. We'll do a timeline video. We're gonna talk yeah. about MCAT, secondaries, interviews. personal statements, interviews. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good series. Is that a lot going on here, yeah. man? Yeah. So I hope you stay with us. And, um, yeah. We'll see ya. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>